Good morning guys. Welcome to another video by Antiques Arena. My name is Walter O'Neill. Now for all the new subscribers, um, basically I am an antique dealer or that's the posh term for somebody who sells second hand items. I go around car boot sales, antique fairs, auctions, house clearances, anything uh, or anywhere I can and I buy pieces that I like. Um, I tend to buy pieces I don't like as well. Sometimes you've got to take a job lot and then I put the pieces I like into my shop, some on eBay and the rest goes back to a car boot sale. So I buy anywhere and everywhere, but mainly car boot sales and I sell in three locations. I sell in my shop, which I'm going to give you a lovely tour of in a minute. I sell on eBay, which my eBay ID is Antique Serena Clearance. Uh, for those of you who want to know that and I also sell at my local car boot sales. I don't do antique fairs no more. Um, it's not to say I won't but at the moment I don't do them. Uh, so what can I say? Why do I do it? I absolutely love it. <laughs> Some days it's um, it's harder than others. Some days you know you go out and you find something for a pound it's worth a thousand. Very few and far between. Other days you, you buy in work in stock. It is a hard, hard job, guys, but it is a wonderful job when you can pick pieces up that are full of history and things. Um, I just love it. I really do. Now, I've been asked to do a video of my shop. Um, I got a very special friend in Ohio, Dorothy Hyla, and she is in the middle of setting up a brick and mortar shop. And she has asked me to do a tour of my shop so she can see how I've got things laid out. So. For her and everyone else who wants to take a look around my shop and have a little nose as to what I'm selling, I'm going to give you a tour now. So I really hope you enjoy having a look. Stay tuned, guys. Okay, we'll just we'll start down this end, work my way out, and then I'll show you my window display at the end. And you, what you will find is I have wasted no space whatsoever in this shop. Unless you count the ceiling, which I'm not allowed to use. And one thing I do try to avoid is stacking. Give you a little look. I'm gonna do it's gonna be a slow video, guys. I want you to have a really good look at what's in the cabinets, how it's laid out, prices, things like that. I try and be very fair on the pricing. I'd rather price it down, make less profit, and move more stock. I'm not one to hold on to stock unnecessarily. Unfortunately, things don't move as fast as you'd like. So some things you end up keeping for a few years, other things you sell very, very fast. But you can't just have these fast sellers, otherwise you literally, you'd have nothing in your shop. Most of this you've seen on films, not all of it. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I film what I think you'll find interesting. These are all my boxes already. I've already sold a couple of those uh, that I filmed yesterday. You'll see there is no reasoning, to be honest with you, on how I've put it together. I used to keep all the jewellery together, all the glass together, all the porcelain together, um, and so forth. But uh, what I found was people would go to a little section and leave. So now I just put anything everywhere and anywhere, as long as it looks good together and the display is nice. One thing antique dealers can do is they can fill a shelf up with a mismatch of items and still get it to look good. And as you can see, my shelves are very loaded, but not overloaded. There's not stuff on top of each other, that's what you can't see. If anybody's actually looking for the dearer items, you'll find my dearer pieces go online. Tend to have a cut off in the shop of a couple of hundred pound. 
But to be honest with you, most of my dealer pieces do go on eBay. I thought these would have sold fast. These have been here now for about eight weeks. Beautiful set of lead soldiers. All hand painted, beautiful set. Some of the toys moved fast, others didn't. There's a whole new subject for me toys. I got toy, started uh, doing the vintage toys and film memorabilia from being a member of the Tat Chat with Nick and Andrea Hills. That's gone now. They still have a YouTube channel. And that's when I started seeing the prices people were getting on vintage toys. Um, by vintage toys I mean like 18 vans, things like that. Film or movie or cartoon memorabilia toys I do a lot of now. I never used to. Starship Enterprise, Marvin the Martian there. There's old Jeeves, back to work in the corner, giving my business cards away, look. I bought him down in Cardiff a couple of years ago now. He's all carved wood, he is. He's not a fiberglass one. Beautiful. The window display has changed totally as well. It's a much bigger shop. I can give you a little view of the shop now because i got to go down this side again. I know it's small compared to antique centres and things, but it's much bigger for me of what I had. The last shop I had was very small and I am still very proud to be on the high street. When other businesses are shutting down, I'm still here. It's not easy guys, it's a lot of effort, a lot of dedication and a lot of work. But if I have a quiet day I tend to list on eBay while I'm here. I do my photographing, my wrapping, my parceling, everything from here. So the shop has a double purpose, it then also becomes my office. Which then means when I go home I can shut off, switch off and just forget everything. Favourite item in the shop. You will notice as you go on through it that I do a lot with jewellery purely because I have a lot of ladies walk in off the street, take a fancy to a bit of jewellery, and they, uh, they just take a necklace or a bracelet or something, and I buy them so cheap at car boot sales that. They just something the bread and butter if you like. They pay my bills. Have a few cabinets here. Nice bit of carving to come in this week. A lot of coins and fob medals and tongs and all sorts in there. Good little mixture. This one here used to be mounted on a wall in my other shop. And it's, um, well as you can see, I think there's about a hundred necklaces in there. Between 10 and 15 pound, 20 pound. So it worked out it's over a thousand pound in there. Just in that one little square cabinet in silver. And most of them come in the car boot sales for one or two quid. Uh, which is what I mean by little silver items are your profit margins. The shop probably isn't to everybody's taste, but it's how I wanted it laid out and I do like the mix of items. Every item is bought by myself, chosen by myself. 
So I only buy things I like. Oh, I try to only buy things I like sometimes. I'll do one or two bits that I know I can sell and I'll just pick them up. But you have to do that. As you can see while I'm going through it, it's not all antique. I do antique, I do collectibles, I do vintage, I'll even do modern, providing it's got a really good name or pedigree behind it. Really does have to be something special. If it's if you find out, you know, it's like a piece of bakra or waterford or something real good quality in a shop that's going to cost you the earth then I'll buy it and put it in here at a much less price, lower price problem is I don't ship some items so not everything gets shipped and some things I actually like and don't care if they don't sell As with most dealers, we'll uh, mark some things up and think, do you know what, that looks good in the shop. If you don't sell, I don't care. I'd like some of it to move faster than it does, obviously. I expected the, some of these coins to have gone faster. I've done well off the others, but I've been stuck with those for a while now. I know I can put them online and drop the price, but... They look good in the cabinets, and I'm moving enough of, enough of the other stuff. So, there you go. You got all the ladro and nail here. You know, that's from like the 1980s, 90s and 2000s. So, as I said, if it's got a name behind it, I will buy it. We're nearly done guys, a few more uh, cabinets and then the window display. I've changed the window display recently so I'm looking forward to showing you that. Obviously all up on top of the cabinets is all full. Every cabinet on top has been utilised. Now some people look at this as junk and wouldn't have it and give you house room. Other people look at it as antiques and love it. You know, at the end of the day we're all into different things. Is it trash? Is it junk? Is it antiques? You know, <laughs> the only people who can decide are the people who love it. Personally I love it. One man's trash, another man's treasure and all that. My shelves do need to tidy up where I've had sales yesterday and the day before. I haven't refilled the shelves yet. So that has to be done soon. Let me take you outside and show you the window display. Okay, so 
that's my shop. Hopefully you like it. Um, it's not going to appeal to everybody, so I understand if some of you think, mm, I don't like that, it looks like a junk shop. And It's absolutely fine. Don't, you don't offend me. Um, as I said, everybody has their own taste. Some people call it trash, some people call it treasure. Personally, I think it's all treasure. I absolutely love everything in you. Um, and that's exactly why I get up at four in the morning, some mornings, or three o'clock in the morning, get out in freezing cold, in the rain and all other weathers, digging through boxes under tables of car boot sales and things like that. It's an addiction. I absolutely love it. I got just as much on eBay and more again waiting to go up for sale just in storage. So all in all, <laughs> I got a fair bit of stock. Um, but you can never have too much stock because one day I may be ill or, you know, the boot sales could stop. You never know. One day they could stop. And at least I got enough stocks to keep going for a couple of years before I'm in trouble. Um, always forward planning me. So, um, what more can I say? That's my job, guys. I go around car boot sales and things. I pick up pieces. And more often than not, a car boot sales. I pay the full asking price because I'm not being funny. If they sell in a silver necklace for two quid and I'm going to sell it for 10 or 15, why knock them down? If they sell in an 18th century drinking glass for a fiver and I'm going to get £100 for it, why knock them down? Let them have what they're asking. So very rare you'll actually see me knock people down the car boot sales and things. When I'm at Bessemer, I do manage to film with a body cam. That's the only car boot sale I've had permission to film at. Um, all the others I won't film at because I can't afford to get banned from them because they are my livelihood. This is my job, guys. I go around car boot sales, buying stock, and selling it in the shop. I really hope you've enjoyed. Bye for now.